Good morning, PFN Church family. It is June the 14th, and we are happy to be together. We may be apart still, but as that video said, God is with us. He is not distant. He is in our hearts and in our homes. Thank you so much for your patience with me and with all of our team as we have worked through all of this time. Live stream has been a blessing for so many of us. During this quarantine and during the coronavirus, what would we have done without live stream? But in two weeks, we're not, a, con, not only going to continue live stream, but we will be adding back in-person worship. Uh, check Facebook or our website as we will give you details of our first couple of weeks back together. Uh, today, we have great worship a uh, message from our study of Ephesians and some other things that you're going to enjoy in this service. Uh, hey, you just heard Cheryl say, next week is Father's Day. What a great Sunday for us to come together to honor our men. Uh, our pastor to men, Mark Stevens, will be helping us next week. So don't, don't miss the service. And don't miss honoring the men in your life. Really, we are so thankful for all the growing, deepening, godly men at PFN, Summit, and Southside. Let's be like Joshua in the Old Testament. As for me and my house, as for you and your house, as for this house of God, we will serve the Lord. So let's do it. Let's serve the Lord through worship. stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean Love me, a sinner. 
so glad to be in the presence of God, to stand amazed in the presence of our maker, the one who created us, the one who defines us. It's only in his eyes that I see my value. I don't have to accept anyone else's opinion about what my worth is, but he, he is my God and I am only the person that he wants me to be, the one that he is speaking into my heart, into my life to be. Would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. Just die for me. Yes, he died for me. Through the sun sets free. Home is free and dear. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me.
am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. for us today. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Let's praise him as we pray together this morning. Would you bow with me? Praise be to the Lord, to our God, our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. I praise you, God, because you are alone, the Lord of all. You made the heavens, the highest heavens, and you made the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything and the multitude of heaven worships you. I praise you, O God, because you are the Lord and there is no other. Apart from you, there is no God. I praise you, God, because who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds us. I praise you, God, because you are wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I praise you, God, because God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I praise you, God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. I praise you, God, for you keep your covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love you and keep your commandments. I praise you, God, because my salvation and my honor depend upon you. You are my mighty rock, my refuge. I praise you, God, for you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among all the peoples. I praise you, God, for though I am poor and needy, you are my help and my deliverance. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence with us today. We pray that you would be in every place where we are today, that we would feel your presence, that we would sense your encouragement, that we would find you drawing near to us. Lord, we pray today for our families. We pray for every child that is represented around our church and in this live stream this morning. Be with our children, Lord. Draw their hearts near to you and help them to know Christ as their Savior. We pray today for every teenager and young adult. We pray for them, Lord, as they continue to, to grow in their life and to seek and understand what their future looks like. We pray for them. We pray for our youth group. We pray for all of our teenagers, Lord. We pray for all of our young adults. We pray for our college students. We lift all of them to you, Lord. We give you praise that you know their name and you know where they are and you know what's happening for them. Whatever they are seeking today, Lord, we pray that you would be their help and their strength. Lord, I pray today for all the ladies that your hand would be on them, Lord, as we've gone through this, this time together in the 
uh, dealing with the virus and the quarantine. Thank you, Lord, for giving strength every day. Thank you for blessing families and helping moms uh, take care of their families. We pray for all of those ladies, Lord, that might have been so lonely during this time. May your blessings and your help be upon them. Lord, finally, I pray for our men. As I think about Father's Day coming next week and the celebration that we will have of men. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to come as the perfect example of a godly man. A man who demonstrated that godly living means walking in your spirit and your truth. Lord, I lift up the Christian men everywhere and pray that your grace and truth would remain upon them that they would become strong in the Lord and in his mighty strength and not rely on their own abilities, but rest in you alone. Lord, I pray today that you would build up your church, that you would build the body of Christ, that you would raise up an army of boys and girls, teenagers, young men, uh, men and women of all ages who will become a reflection of the Lord. Lord, we pray today for our nation. We pray for the needs around our country and for the Spirit of God to be upon us. And we pray today very particularly for our church. As we begin to move toward gathering together again, Lord, continue to guide us. May your Holy Spirit be with us. We give you this time. We give you this day. We thank you that you have proclaimed who we are. Who am I? that the highest king would welcome me. All praise to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody together said, amen. And now it's time for Six for Conversations with Cheryl. Good morning, PFN. Good morning, Summit Family in Washington. Good morning, Southside Community Center all throughout Peoria. And good morning, all of our online friends. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the service this morning. I have a wonderful privilege today to talk to an incredible friend of mine. Uh, would you welcome Nicole Kurtois. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Thanks for being a part of Six of Conversations today. I'm just making sure that we're at a safe distance, and we are, so you stay over there, okay? All right, I will. Uh, okay, I'll stay over here. So uh, we're interested to know, I wondered if you would share a little bit of your story with all of us. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was brought to church through the Sherwood family, and then um, it took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do with church and um, with God. And so a couple of years down the road, um, I accepted Christ as my Savior at teen camp after my freshman year of high school. And then um, after that, I just kept um, being involved in the youth group and in the church as a whole, and then um, just fell more in love with Jesus. And through that was called to ministry. And I yet in trying to figure out what that looks like for me, but um, I followed that calling to Olivet Nazarene University, which I will be a sophomore this year, and um, I'm now studying pastoral ministry, and I'm um, trying to figure out what God wants me to do within the church and how he wants to use me there. Amazing. What an incredible story. Bring your friends to church. That's the moral to that story. That's awesome. Uh, now, during this time, as Christ followers, God's girls, uh, it's important for us to not only um, share God's blessings with other people, but to find ways to connect them to Jesus. And so I'm just wondering, uh, what kinds of things are you doing right now? Yeah, um, I'm working at Taco Bell. Um, I've been working there for about three years, and so I've been trying to build my relationships there and to keep them going since they've kind of got developed over the couple years and just trying to show Jesus through that. But also, I had to say goodbye to my friends abruptly because of COVID. Yes. And so they're all over the country, and we're trying to figure out ways to FaceTime, do group FaceTimes. Um, we're planning a trip to Florida, which will be very fun um, after all these rules are over with. And just trying to stay connected sure. when we're all in all different areas. And so trying to do Bible studies and trying to pray with one another, even though we're not physically there. Together, sure, sure. I love that, that you've decided that your job is kind of your mission field, that you can develop relationships and friendships there. That's beautiful. 
Um, so with all of this, how are you taking care of yourself? What kinds of things are you doing to make sure, you know, spiritually you're doing well, physically you're doing well, especially right now, emotionally, mentally, you're doing well? Yeah, um, I actually decided to run the Chicago Marathon this fall for Team World Vision. No, I, um, I asked, how are you taking care of yourself? Yeah. A marathon? <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> so it's keeping me motivated to actually exercise every day. Sure. And so um, running every day has really helped my mental well-being. And um, just I feel like I'm part of something that's bigger than myself, which is really awesome. And it's built community, and it's um, helped me take a shower every day, brush my teeth every day. Um, our professors were really pushing us to make sure we're doing the regular things, even sure. though we're probably just sitting at home um, in the beginning of COVID. And so I think those daily things were really important, making sure I'm eating and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, I count it such a privilege to call you my friend. So I appreciate you spending some time with me this morning, and we're happy to know um, she represents kind of a, all of our college kids. Uh, we have a whole bunch of, of amazing young adults. Uh, some of them uh, had to come home early, uh, just like Nicole, and many of them working online to finish different things. And so you're such a blessing to us, and we're so glad that you're part of our church family. So thanks for um, representing for all the college kids. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, if you would like to give today, uh, we would love that. It would be so fantastic. And we thank you for how you are continuing uh, to make that such a priority in your lives. Um, we know that things look very different right now. And so thank you that you're honoring God in that way. Uh, if you would like to text NASPAY to 77977, that'd be fantastic. Or you can give right there on the website. There's a Give tab you could choose. Uh, both of those will give you three choices. You could give to Summit Nazarene, which is our Washington campus. You could give to Southside Community Center, which is our Peoria campus. Or you could give to Pekin First Nazarene, which is right here in Pekin. Uh, if you would like to mail uh, your tithes and offerings or bring it by the office, because remember the office is open during the week now, uh, that address is 3514 Broadway Street, Pekin, Illinois, 61554. So thank you for your consistency. Uh, next Sunday, June 21st, is Father's Day. And so we just want to make sure you got that on your mind. Uh, maybe you can invite your dad to come and watch the live stream service with you or maybe even share a meal. So uh, keep that in mind. And then on June 28th, uh, will be our first in-person uh, service back together. We're going to come home to PFN, and so we're so excited about that. Please continue to watch for information about that. Uh, we are meeting and planning and trying to get everything ready and safe and sanitized uh, for everybody to come back. So that's June 28th, uh, so if you'll mark that down, that would be great. If you could take just a second and fill out a communication card right there on the website. If you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, you could put that right in the chat room. Who you are, where you're watching from, who you're watching with. And if you have any questions or prayer requests, you could mark them right there. Um, engage with us in conversation because we'd love to be praying for you. Uh, and if you want to grab the sermon notes, Pastor Brock uh, will be here in just a moment to talk about Ephesians. Uh, we've been studying Ephesians together. And so we appreciate you being a part of the service today. Have a great Sunday. All right, we're in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I uh, hope you have your notes. And, and by the way, right at the end of your notes, you'll find remix notes, uh, some questions that you can use to study together with some other people. We'd love for you to do that. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, the early part of chapter 1, uh, about praise, chosen, adopted, and redeemed. So now we're coming to the end of this section uh, that takes us down through verses 13 and 14. Uh, Paul is talking about in this section the celebration that he wants us to have in him uh, to recognize what he is doing for us. So let's hear it. Uh, I'll start with verse 9 uh, today. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined, according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, 
in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. Paul is talking about being in Christ. The name of this series, Who I Am and How I Am Living, How I Live in Christ. You heard the emphasis over and over again in that section I just read multiple times, nine different times that Paul is speaking about being in Christ. It's a wonder. It's a miracle. To begin with, Paul is so clear that the root of what God is doing in us is coming in Christ. Verse 13, we saw we heard said, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, believed in him. So that's what we're talking about um, today is Paul's uh, incredible expression of who we are in Christ. And his term, his favorite term, is in Christ or in Christ Jesus. Paul uses this term multiple times in his letters. Some have counted it to be about 169 times. These terms, this term in Christ, uh, was not used prior to Paul, and it's rare outside of his writing. So what, what does it signify? First of all, in Christ indicates a radical transformation, a radical transformation. Paul lays that out for us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is a, a powerful statement uh, for us and for us to understand. It's powerful in, when, you, when you read it in the original, there, there are no verbs. It basically just says, if a person is in Christ, new creation. So he's helping us to see that he's radically, fundamentally new. Not only that, but the new has come. Being in Christ is nothing less than being made truly alive. And so in Christ shall all be made alive, says Paul. It's a, it's a total spiritual change. He's recognizing that Christ becomes the soil in which we grow, the atmosphere in which we breathe, the source, the goal of our whole existence as men and women. Being in Christ brings like a radical reorientation of how we live. It's a movement from external righteousness toward inward righteousness that is a radical change in our conduct. He's wanting you to think about not how many rules you kept or how often you went to church or somebody in your life that was a Christian, but are you internally, are you in Christ? As a result, though the world can hate, those in Christ forgive and are filled with love. While the world lusts for more things, those in Christ can find contentment. From my perspective, in Christ really even is stronger in terms than the term Christian in descri describing Christianity. Aside from the fact that Christian is used only three times in the New Testament, Acts 11, 26, Acts 26, 28, and 1 Peter 4, 16. This title, in Christ, is, is more than just an ambiguous statement about religion. He's not talking about being a part of a, a country that we would say was a Christian nation, maybe that we used to say, or recognizing that we make some claim and yet we act in all kinds of different ways. No, he says in Christ, he's inviting us not to live in abuse and breakdown, but we have a dynamic, dynamic living relationship with Jesus. Another place, Philippians 121, Paul says it this way, for me to live 
is Christ. Christianity is Christ. Those who are not in Christ are not, not really Christians because we can't just trust something external. We've got to be changed from in. That's the radical transformation that he has offered to us. Paul talks in Ephesians that we as men and women, as believers, are in Christ. The second thing you notice is that being in Christ brings tremendous dynamic unity. Unity with God, unity with each other. The heart of our unity is that we become members together of the body of Christ. It's a spiritual idea where, where we have this organic relationship with Jesus. Later, he says, we are seated in the heavenly places with him, Ephesians 2.6. We are there because we are in him. Through this union, this uniting with Christ, it creates like a profound oneness with other believers. Paul himself says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. That is a dynamic unity that astounded the early people that heard this. It's reminding us that there are great splits in our society. Language, religion, nationalities, different conditions and status of all uh, sexuality and a split uh, in our world. Recognizing that the benefits of the gospel change all of that. We turn from unlearned, from slave and master, to, from barbarian and Greek, from man and woman that stands on opposite side thrusting hostilities at each other. The gospel says the barbarian and the Scythian, bond and free, male and female, Jew and Greek, learned and ignorant, all clasp hands together, sitting down at one table, offering ourselves to God, and we are one in Christ Jesus. Praise his name. In Christ. That's what conquers the world. There is much professing Christianity without unity. One of the things that is a struggle for me is uh, all the different splits and denominations. When I was growing up in South Carolina, uh, I would notice that this, this new little building would show up and there was a new sign out there and no, no mockery intended, there'd be a brand new Baptist church out there. You know, that happened like 10, 12 times. And, and I would ask my mother, did, we, did they start a new church in our town? And she would sheepishly say, I think that other church split. Uh, it's a struggle, isn't it? That we have all these different independent places, um, but Christ wants us to be gathered as one, coming together as one, recognizing that he has drawn us together to be one in him. The scripture tells us how awesome it is to receive the refreshment, the joy, the, the beauty of what Christ has done for us. Christ offers us this truth in John 7. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, his heart will flow live, rivers of living water. Uh, I, I don't know what you're trying to gain, what people are trying to gain in the world, but you can have all the money. You can all have all the fame. You can have all the notoriety. Lots of people can know who you are, but nothing touches knowing Christ and having him living in us. He brings us joy and satisfaction in him. Radical transformation, unity and satisfaction in him. Could there be anything more satisfying than this relationship with Christ? How, do, how does that come to us? Humanly speaking, it comes through believing. Paul said in verse 13, In him you also heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believed in him. Were you sealed with the promised Holy Spirit? So believing in Christ is the path to being in Christ. That works for me and works for millions of others who are in Christ. 
But there's another step. He mentions this amazing work of the, of the Holy Spirit. None of that happens being in Christ without the astounding work of the Holy Spirit in us that unites us and brings us, includes us in the body of Christ. Paul describes the Spirit's work in, in that last sentence of verse 13 in the first part of verse 14. Having believed in him, you were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit who is our guarantee, the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. So two questions. What does it mean to be sealed? And what does it mean for the Holy Spirit to be our guarantee? In regard to the sealing, the ancient world, an owner of some property or some possession would attach his seal to that possession. That's what God has done for us. He tagged you. He left his mark on you. He left his mark in your heart. It says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Romans 8, 16 and 17. The seal not only assures us that we are his, but it offers us protection. Later in Ephesians, we find the same word where he's talking about the Holy Spirit of God that we are sealed for the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, 30. We belong to the Lord. We belong to God and are under his protection until the great day of redemption. But also along with his mark or seal, the Holy Spirit serves as a guarantee of our inheritance. We understand from the Greek and the Roman culture that it was customary to pay a deposit, a deposit on a possession that was going to be purchased. It was like a down payment that announced, I'm giving you this now, but there's more to come. This is the first installment. We might today call it earnest money. We understand that the spiritual life given to us by the Holy Spirit is simply an opportunity, an installment of what is yet to come. I want you to think about how you've been blessed by God. I want you to think about how God has touched your life. I want you to think about all those times that he's healed and worked and, and, and answered your prayers and worked in you. I want you to think about those moments when you've been in worship and you felt the spirit of God and how awesome that is. I just want to tell you that that is just a little taste of what it's going to be like. Oh, we can't miss it. He's saying that the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of the inheritance that's coming. This verse says it well. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. What no eye has seen. No ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through his spirit. The Holy Spirit says, God is making a deposit in you, but there is so much more to come. It's like, you know, you got the little appetizer, but there's a feast to come. Look at what he has done. What, what is it going to be like? I, just think about, think about the first five minutes in eternity when you get there and re- see and fulfill the, the fullness of the inheritance. How about 15 minutes? How about the first hour, the first day, the first year, the first thousand years? The end of it all is that God, when we are in Christ, is preparing an inheritance for us. We are God's possession. The huge significance of what Paul is talking about here um, can be understood as we think about how, how God describes the Old Testament, the people of Israel. Only Israel was called God's possession. Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, said, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make them my treasured possession. Those words now apply to us, and it's really stupendous. This places Jews and Gentiles, all of us, all people, on the same equal footing in regard to the benefits of what Christ has done for us. The final phrase of verse 14 is that chorus. To the praise of his glory, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Then in verse 6, he says again, praise to his glorious grace. 
Verse 12, praise to his glory. Verse 14, praise to his glory. I think he's trying to tell us something, don't you? We are to celebrate being in Christ. Radically transformed. Dynamic union with God and with each other. And satisfied. Fulfilled in him. We celebrate the seal that is on us. The spirit that has come in and indwelt us. See, the witness of the spirit is just a foretaste of what's coming. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you in Christ? Could you soak on that with me today? See, I'd I'd love for you today to make a decision to be in Christ. I'm not asking you to join the Church of the Nazarene. I'm not asking you what religion you are. I'm not asking you if you have a godly mother or a grandmother that influenced you. I'm asking you one question. Are you in Christ? Have you received him? Have you welcomed him into your heart? Are you living your life with the anticipation of what he has in store for you? He has paid the price for your salvation. I invite you today, as we pray at the close of this service, turn your heart toward him. Maybe you've served him for a lot of years. Maybe you know well what it means to be in Christ. But I'm pretty sure that there's some of you this morning that have not made that decision. You maybe thought about religion or being a little more spiritual. But I want you today to be in Christ. Radically transformed. Internally changed by the work of Christ and his Holy Spirit in you. Would you make a decision like that today? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, what what a section of scripture. And it's really the essence of what being a Christian is all about. Lord, I thank you for every person that is watching this service right now. And if there's one person one person that maybe doesn't know you. I met people even this week that said they've been watching, that things have been happening in their life. Maybe one of those folks or somebody is watching right now and today's their day. Today is the day to make a decision for Christ. Open the door. Open the door of your heart. Welcome him in. Let this be the day, June the 14th, 2020, that you made a decision to welcome Christ into your heart and life. Be free. Be forgiven. Be cleansed by the work of Christ in you. Live the rest of your life in Christ, allowing him to teach you, to walk with you, to guide your conduct and your attitude and your choices. And don't forget, if you're in Christ, God is preparing a great inheritance for you. It's going to be awesome. What you've experienced here is only just a taste. But multiply that by a million fold and realize what God is offering to you. Don't just be a religious person. Be an in Christ believer. Lord, thank you for those that committed their hearts to you today. I thank you in advance for the commitment that they're making, and I pray that you would encourage them and allow us to encourage them. I pray that they would reach out to me or to a believer that would encourage them in their faith. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for this scripture that we are able to study together today. May your blessings be on us all. In Jesus' name, amen. One 
with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my King, what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus.